What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, shrinksandsneakers.com. So again, thank you to everyone who's liked and subscribed to the channel. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe below. And we're gonna be covering lots of things related to mental health. Specifically, I wanna to cover today this idea of bupropion or Wellbutrin and seizure risk. So this was a question that popped up in one of the, in one of the previous videos that I made where somebody asked, does bupropion cause increased risk of seizure? Now, of course, like everything else in life, it's a nuanced point. So it's actually not quite as black and white as we'd like it to be, but let's go through the data and let's see what the research actually says. Does bupropion increase your risk of seizure? So in my experience, there's kind of two different people in this category. There's those who are not concerned enough with the risk of seizure in bupropion, and I've had some attendings who like to even go beyond 450 milligrams, which I would not advise, and I'll explain why in a minute, but there are some people that feel like, oh, it, it works better at higher doses, and you gotta go up on the dose in order to get the full effect. Then you have other people who are way too cautious and feel like, oh, I, you know, anybody who has a hint of seizure risk, I'm not going to prescribe this medication. Okay, so uh, both of those people are wrong, right, for different reasons, and we're gonna go ahead and crack into why that is. So bupropion is actually a very valuable antidepressant, right? And one of the big reasons why it's a valuable antidepressant is because it doesn't cause sexual dysfunction. And sexual dysfunction can be a major cause uh, for people to stop taking these medications and feel like they don't need to take them anymore because it's disrupting a major part of their life. I mean, our, our, our sexual health is very important and um, if you can't perform adequately or you're having difficulty, that's going to cause you more stress, anxiety, and depression. So sexual dysfunction is one reason. Another good reason is weight gain. A lot of antidepressants have been known to cause weight gain. This is one that is actually used as part of a weight loss medication, and I've talked about this a little bit with uh, naltrexone, and it's, it's actually, it, so it actually can help people to lose weight. So it can improve sexual function, or at least not hinder it. It can decrease the risk for weight gain, and it can be energizing. So a lot of times if I have a patient who's very, very low energy, lethargic, listless, just can't get out of their own way, I like to use things like bupropion to help that person. So we need to co correctly kind of understand the seizure risk of bupropion and what the reality is versus what the perceived notions are. You may be shocked to find out that the risk of seizure in bupropion sustained release up to 300 milligrams a day, so sustained release bupropion up to 300 milligrams a day is 0.1%. So what does that translate to? That translates to approximately one in 1,000 people, which is exactly the same risk of seizure as, as SSRIs, as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So if you're taking Lexapro or you're taking sertraline, you're at, you're at the same risk as someone taking 300 milligrams of bupropion, 0.1% or one in a thousand. So with that said, people taking between 150 milligrams to 300 milligrams a day actually don't have a higher seizure risk than those taking SSRIs. So it's the same, same risk, up to 300 milligrams. Now it starts to change a little bit when you start to talk about higher doses and we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So the risk of new onset seizure in the general population is actually 0.08%. So there's actually like a risk of, of people in the general population developing a seizure and it's about 0.08%. So if you compare the 0.1 to 0.08, it's actually not that different, right? So the risk of being on an SSRI and having a seizure, the risk of being on bupropion up to 300 milligrams per day, is actually not that much different than what it would be for, the, for someone in the general population to develop a seizure. So major points here, lower doses of bupropion are not that much worse than say the general population's risk for having a seizure and also it's equal to that of those taking selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or other traditional antidepressants. So not really much of a difference there. Now. On the other hand, when we start looking at higher doses, so the risk of seizure, of course, becomes greater with bupropion. So that's why I said in one of in, in my response to this person's comment that, that it's dose dependent. So it's dose dependent. Now, if you're taking sustained release, 400 milligrams per day, the risk actually goes up to 0.4%.
So the risk is higher, right? 0.1 versus 0.4. And that's four times greater than the doses up to 300 milligrams per day. So this is a pretty, this is more significant. Um, so we want to be aware of that. And in many cases, you don't ever want to go above 450 milligrams, which is the FDA approved limit. So I would not, in my own practice, and I would not recommend to anyone else in their practice to go above 450 milligrams unless they have a lot of clinical experience doing so and are comfortable doing so. Because above 450 milligrams per day, the risk of seizure increases tenfold. It's actually 4%, which is really unacceptably high. 4% is a significant risk here in this case. So I would not necessarily want to go above 450 milligrams again, unless I really had a good reason for it. And even if you have a good reason for it, you're likely going to be held liable if there's an adverse outcome. With that said, the reality is that we should not undervalue the utility of bupropion, and we should not underestimate the risk of seizure. But when we're using this medication in the proper dose range, it does not seem to have as much risk for seizure as some would lead you to believe. So I don't think there's a reason to pull bupropion out of your uh, medication regimen just because you're concerned about seizure. Obviously that changes a little bit if you have a pre-existing seizure condition, you're probably not going to start bupropion to begin with. But with that said, that concludes the video. If you guys have questions or comments about bupropion and wanna know more about the seizure risk, I'm happy to answer those questions. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel and we'll continue making videos tailored to your questions and your thoughts.